Welcome to Module 7, AWS Identity and Access Management. In this module, you will gain knowledge of AWS Identity and Access Management or IAM, and the importance of protecting the AWS root user accounts. We have a lot of subjects to cover, starting from IAM identities, such as IAM root user, IAM user, IAM role, IAM group and IAM policy. Identify specific tasks that only the account root user can perform. The principle of least privilege. I am policy types and I am policy simulator. Authentication and authorization on the use of password and access key. Various authentication methods in AWS, including multi-factor authentication or MFA, AWS Federated Identity, and I am Identity Center. And lastly, the two access policy available for Amazon S3. Let's begin. AWS Identity and Access Management or IAM. IAM is a pivotal service that allows you to securely manage identities and control access to AWS services and resources. IAM enables you to apply fine-grained permissions to AWS services and resources. This level of control allows you to precisely define who or what can access various AWS services. IAM Identity determines who accesses AWS resources. This includes users, groups, roles, and various credentials. Access permissions are defined and controlled through IAM policies. These policies determine what actions users or identities can perform on AWS services and resources. IAM grants access to a wide array of AWS services and resources, just to name a few such as EC2, S3, and Dynamode. It acts as the gateway that regulates access, ensuring that the right individuals or entities have the permissions they need. When you create an AWS account, it comes with a single sign-in identity known as the AWS account root user. The root user has complete access to all AWS services and resources. Access is granted by simply logging in with the email address and password used during the account creation process. IAM users are entities designed for interacting with AWS. These users enable access to the AWS Management Console and permit programmatic requests via API or CLI to AWS services. IAM users have permanent credentials, providing them with direct engagement with the AWS services. IAM user groups are collections of IAM users grouped together for simplified permission management. These groups streamline the process of specifying permissions for a collection of users, making access control more efficient. IAM roles are similar to users in that they have permission policies to define their actions in AWS. However, roles do not have long-term credentials. Instead, assuming a role provides temporary security credentials for the duration of the session, Roles can be assumed by IAM users, applications, or AWS services like EC2. Let's use a simple analogy to better understand the concepts of root user, users, and groups in AWS. Imagine you are a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe or MCU and love watching Iron Man movies. In this analogy, the root user can be compared to the MCU itself, owning all the Marvel characters and having ultimate control. Now, in every Marvel movie, you have the heroes, like the Avengers, and the villains. These heroes and villains are like the user groups in IAM. User groups are collections of IAM users with specific permissions, just like the Avengers and the villains have their own roles in the Marvel Universe. Within the hero or Avengers group, you have individual heroes like Captain America, Iron Man, Hawkeye, and Spider-Man. Similarly, in IAM, Users represent individual entities, each with their own unique permissions. On the other hand, the villain group includes characters like Thanos, Ultron, and Obadiah Stane. Likewise, in IAM, different user groups may have permissions to perform certain tasks that align with their respective roles. The AWS account root user possesses significant power. It's crucial to be mindful of best practices for safeguarding the root user. Ensure the use of a strong and complex password for your account. A strong password is a fundamental defense against potential threats, and never share root user credentials with anyone. Enable the multi-factor authentication or MFA for your root user. This additional layer of security adds a second verification step, making it significantly harder for unauthorized access. 
If you don't already have an access key, avoid creating one for the root user. If you do have an access key, consider deleting it. Access keys for the root user should be handled with caution. Avoid using the root user for routine or everyday tasks. Instead, reserve the root user for initial account setup and creating your first IAM user with appropriate permissions. Restrict root user access to specific tasks that are available only to the root user, such as changing the account setting, modifying support plans, restore IAM user permissions and more. An IAM user is an identity created to represent either users or applications within the AWS environment. Each IAM user is characterized by a name, for example, Steve Rogers, and a set of credentials, typically in the form of a password. By default, newly created IAM users have no initial permissions associated with them. This means they start with a clean slate in terms of access rights, and their capabilities are determined by subsequent permission assignments. IAM users serve two primary purposes within the AWS ecosystem. First, they enable users to sign into the AWS Management Console for interactive tasks. This means they allow human users to access AWS resources via the web-based console. Secondly, IAM users facilitate programmatic requests to AWS services through the API or CLI, the command line interface. This capability empowers automation, as IAM users possess permanent, long-term credentials that enable them to directly interact with AWS services programmatically. Please take note some of the best practice for AWS IAM user. AWS recommends that you create individual IAM users for each person who needs to access AWS. For enhanced security, create individual IAM users for each employee, even if they require the same level of access. This ensures that each IAM user has a unique set of security credentials. An IAM role is an identity designed for individuals, applications, or services to temporarily gain access to specific permissions within AWS. These roles serve as a bridge for users, applications, or services to access resources they might not have direct permissions for. Let's use Iron Man as example of a role. To assume as Iron Man, Tony Stark must have credential to switch to that role. Using the same analogy, to assume an IAM role in AWS, an IAM role, an IAM user, application, or service must first be granted permission to switch to that role. This permission is a critical step, ensuring that access is controlled and follows a defined authorization process. Once an IAM user, application, or service assumes an IAM role, any prior permissions they held from another role are temporarily abandoned. They relinquish their initial permissions and adopt the permissions associated with the new role they've assumed. IAM roles are best suited for granting temporary access to services or resources, as opposed to long-term permissions. For instance, assign a role to grant Amazon EC2 access to an S3 bucket. This enables the EC2 instance to assume the role and acquire the necessary privileges for uploading files to the designated S3 bucket. An IAM group refers to a collection of IAM users. By assigning an IAM policy to the IAM group, all IAM user members within that group are automatically granted the permissions defined by the policy. Imagine a scenario where you have multiple IAM users, such as Steve Rogers, Tony Stark, Clint Barton, and Peter Parker. Instead of individually assigning permissions to each user, the owner can simplify the process by creating an Avenger IAM group. IAM users can be added to the Avenger group, and permissions can be attached at the group level. This streamlined approach centralizes access control, making it more efficient and manageable. The same logic applies to villain group as well. An IAM policy is a document that plays a pivotal role in regulating access within your AWS environment. These policies grant or restrict permissions to AWS services and resources, enabling customized control over users' access levels. IAM policies empower administrators to customize users' access levels to AWS services and resources. 
For example, you can define policies that grant access to either all Amazon S3 buckets in your AWS account or restrict access to a specific bucket. IAM policies are typically stored as JavaScript object notation, the JSON documents. JSON provides a structured and human-readable format for defining policy rules and permissions. A best practice in IAM policy management is the principle of least privilege. This principle emphasizes granting users the minimum amount of permissions required to accomplish their specific tasks. For instance, instead of granting a user access to all AWS buckets, you specify only the necessary bucket in the IAM policy based on their specific needs. Here's an example of a JSON document for an IAM policy that grants access to an S3 object. In this example, we will show you some key elements of JSON policy documents. Version element. It specifies the version of the policy language being used. Effect element. It determines whether the action specified is allowed or denied. Here, it's set to allow. Action element. It specifies the action that is allowed. In this case, S3 colon get object permits retrieving objects from S3. Resource element. It specifies the S3 bucket and objects the policy applies to. The, at the end of the resource ARN indicates all objects within the bucket named my bucket name. There are two types of IAM policies. Managed policies and unmanaged or inline policies. Managed policies are pre-built and independently managed. They come in two forms, AWS managed policies, which are provided by AWS and customer managed policies, which are created and managed by you. Managed policies offer advantages such as reusability, central change management, versioning, delegation of permissions management, and automation for updates. They are particularly useful for handling larger policy sizes. On the other hand, unmanaged or inline policies are created and managed directly, embedded into a single user, group, or role. These policies are beneficial when you need to enforce a strict one-to-one -one relationship between policy and principle, avoid the risk of attaching the wrong policy, and ensure that the policy is deleted when the principle is deleted. The IAM Policy Simulator is your tool to simulate and test IAM policies before making them live. Here's how it works. Test policies attached to IAM users, groups, or roles in your AWS accounts. Test policies linked to AWS resources like Amazon S3 buckets, SQSQs, SNS topics, or Glacier vaults. Test new policies not yet attached by typing or copying them into the simulator. Test policies with selected services actions, and resources. Simulate real-world scenarios by adding context keys, like an IP address or date, in condition elements within the policies. Identify the specific statement in a policy that allows or denies access to a particular resource or action. In IAM, passwords serve as a key to the AWS Management Console, offering a secure gateway for users. Meanwhile, Access keys play a pivotal role in programmatic access, allowing automation through APIs, CLI, PowerShell, and SDK. IAM passwords authenticate users to the AWS Management Console. You can set a custom password policy, specifying complexity and rotation requirements. If not set, IAM user passwords must meet the default AWS policy. Default AWS password policy includes a minimum length of 8 characters, a maximum of 128 characters, a mix of character types, and must not match the AWS account name or email. Passwords never expire. On the other hand, access keys are used for programmatic access through AWS SDKs, CLI, PowerShell, or direct HTTPS calls. It comprises an access key ID and a secret access key. There are two AWS services that you should understand for this exam related to passwords and access key. AWS Secrets Manager handles credentials, preventing hard coding in source code. It ensures robust secret management with automated rotation, audit logging, and seamless AWS integration. AWS Systems Manager, similar to Secrets Manager, offers versatility and cost-effectiveness. It provides a free tier for managing both secrets and non-secret configuration data, 
making it ideal for larger scale environments. For increased security, AWS recommends that you configure multi-factor authentication or MFA to help protect your AWS resources. Multi-factor authentication, MFA, is a multi-step account login process that requires users to enter more information than just a password. For example, Along with the password, users might be asked to enter a code sent to their email, answer a secret question, or scan a fingerprint. A second form of authentication can help prevent unauthorized account access if a system password has been compromised. You can enable MFA for the AWS account root user and IAM users. When you enable MFA for the root user, it affects only the root user credentials. IAM users in the account are distinct identities with their own credentials, and each identity has its own MFA configuration. With MFA enabled, when user signs into the AWS Management Console, they are prompted for their username and password, something they know, and an authentication code from their MFA device, something they have or if they use a biometric enable authenticator, something they are. AWS supported multiple MFA mechanisms. One of the authentication methods available is the FIDO security key. FIDO, which stands for Fast Identity Online, offers a hardware-based approach to MFA. Users can insert a physical security key into their devices to authenticate themselves, providing a high level of security. Virtual MFA Devices is a virtual authenticator application that runs on a phone or other device and emulates a physical device. For instances, Twilio Authy, Duo Mobile, LastPass, Microsoft Authenticator, Google Authenticator and Symantec VIP. Hardware tokens also support the TOPE algorithm and are provided by Thales, a third-party provider. These tokens are for use exclusively with AWS accounts. So how does multi-factor authentication work? When a user with MFA-enabled logs into a website, they are prompted for their username and password, the first factor what they know, and an authentication response from their MFA device, the second factor what they have. If the system verifies the password, it connects to the other items. For example, it may issue a number code to the hardware device or send a code by SMS to the user's mobile device. The user completes the authentication process by verifying the other items. For example, they might enter the code they have received or press a button on the hardware device. The user gets access to the system only when all the other information is verified. In today's digital landscape, most organizations already have an existing corporate directory that serves as the backbone of their employee entity management. IAM recognizes and seamlessly integrates with these organizational corporate directories, offering a smooth avenue for federated users through IAM roles. This integration is particularly valuable for organizations utilizing corporate directories such as Microsoft Active Directory, Ping Federate, Okta, and more, where most employees already have established identities. IAM Identity Providers or IDPs play a pivotal role in this scenario, enabling the utilization of identities managed externally to AWS. This means there's no need to create IAM users within your AWS account. This approach is particularly advantageous for organizations with existing identity systems, eliminating the necessity for custom sign-in code or self-management of identities. One notable feature is SAML 2.0-based federation, leveraging the security assertion markup language. This open standard, widely adopted by many identity providers, facilitates federated single sign-on SSO. With SAML 2.0, users can access the AWS Management Console or utilize AWS APIs without the need to create IAM users individually for everyone in your organization. The diagram illustrates the following steps. The user browses to your organization's portal and selects the option to go to the AWS Management Console. In your organization, the portal is typically a function of your IDP that handles the exchange of trust between your organization and AWS. The portal verifies the user's identity in your organization. The portal generates a SAML authentication response that includes assertions that identify the user and include attributes about the user. The portal sends this response to the client browser. The client browser is redirected to the AWS single sign-on endpoint and posts the SAML assertion. 
The endpoint requests temporary security credentials on behalf of the user and creates a console sign-in URL that uses those credentials. AWS sends the sign-in URL back to the client as a redirect. The client browser is redirected to the AWS Management Console. I am Identity Center, was known as AWS Single Sign-On, helps you to securely create or connect your workforce identities management on an AWS. I am Identity Center allows you to centrally manage workforce access to multiple AWS accounts in your organization. On top of that the IAM Identify Center supports your existing user identity source such as Microsoft Active Directory, Okta, Ping Identity and more. In today's dynamic business environment, organizations often utilize multiple AWS accounts to segregate environments, such as production, test environments, teams, projects and more. To enhance access management across these accounts and streamline control, AWS recommends IAM Identity Center for centralized management of human user access and permissions. IAM Identity Center allows you to securely create or connect your workforce identities, managing their access centrally across various AWS accounts. It seamlessly integrates with your existing user identity sources, such as Microsoft Active Directory, Okta, Ping Identity, and more. One of the key features is its support for identity federation with SAML 2.0, providing federated single sign-on access for users authorized to use applications within the AWS Access Portal. This means users can enjoy a single sign-on experience into services supporting SAML, including the AWS Management Console and third-party applications like Microsoft 365, SAP Concur, and Salesforce. For Amazon Simple Storage Service or S3, you have two distinct approaches to protect your Amazon S3 buckets. IAM user policies offer specific permissions tailored to individual users, providing nuanced control over S3 access. For example, Steve Roger may have read access to objects in the S3 production bucket, while being restricted from writing to the development bucket. In contrast, bucket policies, also known as resource-based policies, govern access at the entire bucket level and its contents, providing a broader control mechanism. IAM user policies are designed for managed AWS S3 access using IAM policies linked to IAM users. Meanwhile, bucket policies grant access permissions to Amazon S3 buckets and the objects within them. IAM user policies are linked to IAM identities or AWS resources. In contrast, bucket policies are attached at the S3 bucket level, affecting all objects within. Both IAM user policies and bucket policies use JSON as their policy language. IAM user policies involve centrally managed permissions in IAM, while bucket policies offer simplified management for numerous S3 buckets. IAM user policies are ideal for streamlined access control beyond S3, centralizing permission management in IAM. Use them for managing numerous S3 buckets with varied permissions, answering the audit question what can this user do in AWS. Bucket policies, on the other hand, provide a straightforward way to grant cross-account access to S3 without using IAM roles. They allow keeping access control policies within the S3 environment and enforcing security controls for interactions with S3 buckets. This is particularly helpful in answering the audit question who can access this S3 bucket? Congratulations! You have completed Module 7. AWS Identity and Access Management.